Tonight, even though AIG was bailed out by the government and you, the me, the taxpayer, the former CEO sued the government over the bailout, said the terms were too tough. Here's the shocker. Hank Greenberg actually won the suit, even though he will not get a cash settlement. We're going to tell you why this victory could have huge ramifications if and when there's another financial crisis. Then, as they say, where there's smoke, there's firings, that is. A Colorado man got canned for smoking medical marijuana, even though it's legal in his state. This case just may have exposed a major complication when it comes to legalizing pot. Then, do you have a right to privacy? Before you answer that question, it turns out the new high-tech toys at stores can identify you just by reading your face. Do retailers have a legal right to do just that? We're going to hash it all out and more with our panel of attorneys. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. And as it is every Wednesday, it's all about the law. We're going to start with a court case that could have huge implications for the entire financial system, and that impacts everyone everywhere. Now, I'm talking about Hank Greenberg, the legendary CEO of AIG, and the lawsuit he not only brought, but actually just won against the federal government, and it was over the way that it handled the bailout of AIG at the peak of the financial crisis. Greenberg was CEO during that time, and his lawsuit said the government didn't have the authority to take an 80% stake in the company as a condition of the rescue. The judges said he was correct, but he didn't get a penny because shareholders at the end of the day weren't hurt. He was asking for $40 billion. Now, it took chutzpah for the Greenberg to even sue, considering AIG got bailed out to the tune of $182 billion. I see Mark here going, that was passable. Yes, thank you. <laughs> the bank rescue, as we all know, controversial, but at the time, the entire financial system, as we also know, was collapsing. We were even talking about Depression 2.0. Now, the government, they had to act fast here in order to prevent that. But as we all know, Lehman Brothers, right, when they went bust, there was a panic in the air, and AIG, they too were on the brink of collapse. That insurance and financial services company was intertwined with every big player when it came to the street. So if it went under, this really is enough for debate. The ripple effect would have been massive. Tim Geithner, he was an architect of the bailout when he ran the New York Fed, and this is what he had to say on the subject. We did not act because AIG asked for help. We did not act to protect individual institutions. We acted because the consequences of AIG failing would have been catastrophic for our economy and for American families and businesses. Now, the ruling in the AIG suit, it could have huge consequences here. And that's because, in essence, the court ruled that the bailout itself was illegal. So in the future, we may not see another bank rescue, even if the whole house of cards is on the brink of collapse. All right, let's bring in our legal panel to weigh in on this and so much more tonight. Jim Kasoris, he is a criminal defense attorney in Manhattan, sitting on the board of directors of the New York City Criminal Bar Association, frequently lecturing at New York Law School and the Bar Associations in Queens and New York City. Mayo Bartlett, an attorney at the law offices of Mayo Bartlett PLLC and a former chief of the Bias Crimes Unit at the Westchester County DA's office. And Mark Furnish, he's a professor at Brooklyn Law and he's argued all the way before the U.S. Supreme Court. And Mark, this case may go all the way to the Supreme Court on appeal. Uh, listen, you look at it on its face, and I'll still say in the main, talk about nerve. <laughs> Nobody thinks objectively that AIG was going to be able to make it without help. Um, and at the end of the day, we, the taxpayers, bailed them out. Now we got our money back and $20 billion on top of it. In and states, shareholders yes. were not harmed. In fact, you can argue they were helped. Look at the converse. What they could have been looking at was uh, basically a penny stock in their hands. And the consequence of the economy, enormous. Judge Wheeler here, when he came down with this ruling, he basically said, you know, you can't. You're violating the Fifth Amendment here. You can't, as the government, come in and dictate the terms of survival. Sounds good, but in a panic environment, it's pretty chilling what that could mean. 
Well, as some law professors and scholars who reacted to the decision said, uh, it's characteristic of government to overreach in times of crisis. It happens in various other contexts. In fact, uh, the Constitution provides for the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus in times of war. But it's important to note, Rich, it wasn't the decision wasn't based on Fifth Amendment grounds. It was based on uh, statutory interpretation. And as I understand the ruling, there's no statutory authority for the feds to intervene, not in a bank-related situation, but in the case of a private company. This is outside their, their, the Fed's traditional domain, which is banking. And you need congressional approval to do that. And moreover, you would certainly need congressional approval for the Feds to get into the business of nationalizing a private insurance company by taking over a controlling stake of 80 percent. But, but let's put this back in context of 2008. And let's deal in real time here. Literally, for anybody who went back over the accounting, if you will, of what was going on in those private meetings, both well, at the accounting, Fed. Well, accounting, you use that word advisedly I do that, when it uh, comes uh, to Hank firmly Greenberg. In cheek yeah. here. But <laughs> they were talking in 24-hour windows here of choices going from bad to worse. We saw what happened with Lehman Brothers. We saw um, when certain companies were trying to dictate terms of the deal and the impact that that had, the panic that it fed. AIG was so interconnected with almost every significant, not just uh, policy here, individual, corporate, and otherwise, there was no time to unwind all this. That, that what was the, what was the alternative? The risk, the government was getting into an uncharted area with, with heightened levels of risk because it was delving into the insurance business. And as you said, it's interconnected with so many different entities around the world. So the reasoning, and it rushed as it was, was we're taking on more risk, so we need more protection. All of that said, the ruling, I don't know what the legal merits of the ruling are or are not. It's perfectly Solomonic in the old way, uh, purely a Pyrrhic victory, and there is chutzpah involved in this, uh, to pronounce he it, says it, to pronounce it yeah. the guttural <laughs> way. Yeah. I'll um, acknowledge that. Because yeah. everybody made big, big money yeah. off of this. AIG is way back yeah. uh, in the black. Their shareholders are making money hand over fist. The government profit off of this. So what this is, this is just another reason why people hate lawyers and people I hate rich get people. That. And Mayo, before we go down the road of, hey, where was the average uh, uh, person who got screwed over in their mortgage, uh, the sun prime well, of a scandal, all those things are fear. But now, let's fast forward, God forbid, 10 years from now, the next bubble bursts. Will the government have to think twice here before they go in and rescue, whether the auto industry, whether the financial yeah, industry, Rich, the, the auto, insurance they industry? they got congressional approval for the They tarp. did, That's but I'm trying to pick an industry that they have to react in real time, yeah. okay? Sure. And we all saw what happened to our 401ks, you know, in a matter, matter of 24 and 48 hours, right? We didn't know what the next day held, especially, remember, we well, all remember what happened when Lehman Brothers went over and the flames on the side of the building with that unfortunate animation they had going? Um, <laughs> Are you worried what happens next time? Absolutely, and to your point, you're really you're looking at a tale of two companies. If you look at Lehman Brothers, I'm quite sure they would have loved to have had the deal that AIG got and right now debate about well, how much of the stake the government could take or whether they could take a stake. Instead, you know, they went the way of the dodo bird, okay? They didn't survive. And people who are free market uh, thinkers believe that either you survive based on being fit or you don't. And it seems to go out the window when those big companies don't survive. If you go back to Ma Bell, you know, the, the telephone company yep. worked well. If you made a call, a call got through. They broke it up into what, three or four different seven. companies, seven companies. Well, that's not the company you want to break up. You don't want to allow an AIG to exist in its present form to begin with. But going forward, the government has to consider, do we actually just allow it to fail? And let's just let the chips fall where and, they and may. And I heard a lot of arguments, I heard it during Congress from, from some folks, but the consequences of if allowing it to do so, it, so we go ahead, you hold your nose, you do it, at least you get a piece and you put some conditions in place that in effect, we save you from yourself here. Um, there should be a payout for us at the end and we got one. And to turn around and have the nerve to sue, everybody thought this case was gonna be laughed out of court. And then maybe because David Boys and, and other attorneys did such stellar work, it suddenly became a question mark, then it became a toss up, and then we get the ruling we get today. Greenberg may not have gotten a buck, to, but do you think tonight he's saying he proved his point? I suppose he's got his own personal vindication, but I'll tell you right now, I'm not worried. Because at the end of the day, fine, you don't want it, 20 minutes later they're going to be calling up and say give it to me. Because they don't want to die. 
And that's what's going to happen. And I'm not worried at all because what's going to happen is it's going to happen again and again and again. The rich are going to get richer and richer and richer. They're going to abuse the money. They're going to abuse the power. But we're going to let them do that. And so we're going to have to help them. We're going to find a way to help them. And in a situation like this, the government will say, listen, okay, you want to go under? Go under. But you and think, then they'll but take the deal. I think you're they'll right. Always come I think you're right. But I think right deal. now. 20% versus zero. It's a no yeah. 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 I think. You're going to have brinksmanship the next time this goes around. You're going to look at some guys are going to look at Dick Fold, and they're going to say the former guy, um, you know, over at Layman, and they're going to say he played hardball too much. And at the end of the day, they made the example of him. But then they're going to go look at Mo Greenberg, and they're going to say, you know what? Um, you hold out later for the best terms you can get. And if the government thinks your demise is going to bring us all down, the government will capitulate. Well, Maybe they won't ask for 70 or 79 uh, percent and change. Maybe they'll settle for 50 percent. Maybe they won't ask for a $20 billion balloon payment on the backside of it. Maybe you dictate better terms if you're willing to play. The banks would have bailed them out, Rich. The bottom line is all of the banks had their insurance with AIG. And if AIG went down, that's why the financial collapse. I think you're overstating the wherewithal. I mean, the banks, if we remember here, they were also having trouble making they numbers. They will but find Richard, the way yeah, to save What can happen, Richard. though, is that these are, these are heavily regulated industries. And what they may find now is that, you, you, you yeah, you appeal this. Then. Well, but now they are. And you appeal, and you may find that, you know, the regulations say that you can't be as big as you are anymore, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. They'll so get, AIG we'll is... We would have thought that would have happened. I'm not their, sure it really well, did. Following this decision, it may happen. expertise. I mean, they weren't doing regular insurance, they were insuring Wall Street, like Jim said, and that's well, what happened. The idea is now we're going to separate, or at least the premise was you're separating your commercial from your institutional banking, uh, uh, from your investment banking, I'm sorry, but I don't know. I, 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 history says, unfortunately, I'm right, this is going to happen again, right. and you really wonder when you look at this, does the government want to say, wait a minute, Am I going to stick my neck out and then face a lawsuit from these ungrateful SOBs after the fact well, here because I bailed them out? Look what happened when they put Arthur Anderson out of business for criminal culpability, but it was catastrophic for the yep. innocent people who worked there. And, and it was reversed. The only people who are ever at absolutely. risk are, are the taxpayers. We say the government. The government changes. The players come and go, although some seem to always be there. You're but right, but the, the broader who will economy pay also um, has to suffer. And that's the part where even if you didn't like bailing out some of these guys, I think history will prove the administration was right to hold their nose and help. Now, it also comes with a little bit of a risk. All right, coming up next, medical marijuana, legal in most of the country, including our neck of the woods, just coming on board. But apparently, you can still get fired from your job for smoking the stuff, even if you have a prescription. It happened to this Colorado guy. This is opening up a can of worms when it comes to the debate over legalizing marijuana. Stay with us.